a physician at Their County Health Services and I've been here for almost five years. Today I'm going to talk to you about preventative health care. So for those of you in your 20s to 30s, um, several of you have probably had uh, babies in this age um, category, so um, you probably have um, had some lab within the last few years, but we recommend that you do have screening lab about every two to three years. Um, we also recommend that in this age that you get regular exercise, so 30 minutes about five days per week. Um, and again, um, if you have any other significant risk factors, family history, et cetera, just be sure to talk to your healthcare provider. For those of you that are 40 or older, you should be having yearly mammograms, but be sure to check with your insurance company to make sure that they do cover a screening mammogram on a yearly basis. Uh, starting at age 45, you should also be getting a colonoscopy. The regulations and recommendations have changed recently but um, again, you will want to check with your insurance company on that. Um, as previously in the past, uh, the recommendation was starting at age 50 for screening colonoscopies. Um, those of you that are 65 and older, um, Medicare does offer an annual uh, Medicare visit. Um, and in that first year of entrance into Medicare, so starting at age 65, you are eligible to have a welcome to Medicare visit. During that Welcome to Medicare visit, it covers a large spectrum of screening uh, modalities. So that includes screening lab, um, lots of different imaging. So if you're at risk of having um, things like uh, lung cancer, that would include um, a low dose CT screening um, of your chest. Um, and then again, the same breast cancer screening, um, a colonoscopy, um, a bone mineral density scan. Um, and um, again, other um, different screening mechanisms depending on your risk factors. Um, lab is also covered under the Welcome and Annual Medicare visits. So also starting at age 65 when you're doing your Welcome to Medicare um, and Annual Medicare visits, um, since it's more of a discussion than your um, typical uh, annual physical exam, not the head to toe examination, but more of a discussion with your healthcare provider. Um, we also discuss things like making sure that you have a health care power of attorney, um, a living will, and those sorts of things set up. So we do have that information available to you at that appointment as well. Um, we also uh, recommend up until um, age 65 having the annual pap smear. Um, so that's the pelvic exam with the cervical cancer screening. Um, and again, if you are at um, high risk for developing cervical cancer um, based upon prior studies, um, that um, uh, recommendation um, may change. So again, make sure that you talk with your healthcare provider um, about um, screening specific for you. Uh, also, um, for everyone, um, should be making sure that you're getting your annual flu uh, vaccine, especially this year with everything going on with coronavirus. Um, and then for those of you 65 and older, um, again, talk with your healthcare provider um, about uh, the pneumonia vaccine and what um, one may be right for you, um, as well as the hepatitis B vaccination series if you've not received that. Um, you also need to make sure that you're up to date on your tetanus, um, which will be every 10 years. Um, and um, uh, again, make sure that there isn't something else that you're um, behind on um, as you talk with your healthcare provider. Uh, just as a reminder, we have the ability to do all of these tests um, and imaging uh, at their County Health Services. So thank you very much for choosing their County Health Services for your care. So I am Wendy Vanskyver. Um, I'm one of the PAs with their County Health Services. Um, I've been in practice now for almost 13 years. Um, and so in talking about mammograms, um, I will first say that the discomfort level for every woman is going to be different. Um, some women do feel like the 3D mammogram uh, is a little less uncomfortable than the previous 2D. Um, it really just depends upon the, the person. Um, we have just recently gotten uh, some new uh, technology, new equipment for our mammography machine that will hopefully make the mammograms even less uncomfortable for women. So that's a great thing for their county health services. Um, and as to how has 3D mammography changed the way that I practice, um, really 3D mammography is just so much better than 2D. Um, it takes 
a multitude of pictures at different angles of the breast rather than just a um, two-dimensional x-ray from the top and from the side. And so it has made detecting even small cancers or small lesions much um, easier for us. There are fewer callbacks, fewer um, extra tests. The, the biggest benefit of 3D mammography versus 2D is that it helps to detect smaller lesions in dense breasts because dense breast tissue appears white on a mammogram and the lesions that we're looking for, particularly cancer lesions, will show up as white as well. So if we're only getting 2D images, um, we're much more likely to miss those in dense breast tissue, whereas if we're getting multiple images at multiple angles, we're more likely to pick up on smaller lesions even with dense breast tissue. So um, the way that I practice probably hasn't changed so much. Um, and I do recommend a mammogram for every single woman every year over 40. Um, and there are certainly exceptions to that rule when we would get them at a younger age. But um, yeah, I, like I said, 3D mammography at Thayer County um, is a great, great thing. We're very lucky to have the 3D mammography. And now the other new technology that's going to make it even less uncomfortable for you to get your mammy scrammed. My name is Shelly. I work here at Thayer County Health Services. I am the mammo tech here. Um, I am excited to announce that we have gotten the new Smart Curve paddles um, to make things much more comfortable. Along with the Smart Curve paddles, we have our new Bella blankets. And these are just adhesive and they stick right on the paddle. So it's not cold and you don't stick to the machine anymore. So when we're done with the compression, you don't have to peel yourself out. There's no um, pinching or anything on the bottom side and um, it's not cold anymore. Just have to deal with my cold hands, but no cold paddle anymore. So obviously having a mammogram is no trip to the spa. I completely understand that. So having these two new additions to our mammal room is going to make things so much more comfortable. Um, I'm super excited about it because I also know how uncomfortable it is to come in and have this done. Being more comfortable not only makes things um, easier for the patient, but you, it increases their anxiety. They're not so anxious and tense when they come in to see me. And because of that, I am able to get better quality images and get more tissue in the machine. So it's gonna make things better all the way around. Better images, better quality images, and most important, you're gonna be a lot more comfortable. So I'm gonna show you the difference between the paddles that we've been using and our new paddles. Um, I have a little demonstrator here. Where in the past, when it compresses, it compresses pretty much flat down. You know, that's where a lot of the jokes about getting pancakes and everything in here just completely compresses flat down all the way across your body. Obviously, a woman's body is not built with 90 degree angles. So, showing the difference here. This is the old. This is the new. So you can see it's curved on the edges and curved along the body. So now, when we compress, it compresses and conforms to the body. It's designed more like a woman's body. It's no more right angles. So it's an even amount of compression. Again, getting better images, better quality images, and obviously making things so much more comfortable. So between our new curved paddle and the Bella blankets, you don't have an excuse not to come and see me anymore. We have everything right here in Bear County that's top-notch, state-of-the-art equipment that you could go to Omaha or anywhere else and have done, but you don't need to do that anymore. You have it right here with us at Bear County. Your comfort in here is very important to me. I know not only to get the best quality images, the best pictures, but just to ensure that you have a good experience. I want you to come back and see me every year. I want you to come in and not have that anxiety and, and not um, be so stressed about it being painful and everything. I want you to come in and be relaxed and um, real quick, you know, 15 minutes, I'll have you in and out of here. We'll get your good pictures. You won't have any uh, any red marks anymore. It'll decrease that. It'll The, the paddle, your paddle will um, decrease and you know the, the chances of getting bruised when it pulls on your skin 
Um, just going to be a much, much more comfortable experience. And again, you don't have any excuses not to come see me. And I want you to come back year after year. I want you to have a good experience. So give us a call. My name is Jerry Sons, nurse practitioner here at Third County Health Services. I've been practicing here for almost two years. So for Women's Health tonight, I was asked to talk to you about the CT low-dose lung screening. So eligibility criteria um, for the low-dose lung CT screening is being of the age 55 to 77 years old, being asymptomatic, meaning you're not having any symptoms, um, having a history of tobacco smoking um, of at least a 30 pack years. A one pack year equals smoking one pack per day for one year. So having at least a 30 pack year um, a current smoker or one who has quit smoking within the, the past 15 years. So this is shared decision making with your provider and you um, to see if you meet the eligibility criteria um, to have this screening. So it's a CT scan that is a low dose um, of your lungs and that can be used to pick up um, any signs of lung cancer early. Um, the screening can be performed yearly up until that 15 years um, has lapsed that you have stopped smoking um, or until you meet the age of 77. Um, with that shared decision making with the provider you can talk about the risks and benefits. So if you do have a history of smoking you can schedule an annual physical with your provider and you'll have the option to discuss receiving that test. We do have the availability to order the test here at Thayer County Health Services. I'm Maggie Johnson. I'm a physician assistant at Thayer County Health Services. I started working at Thayer County Health Services in 2002 as a physician assistant and have been in there here ever since. I've been asked to tell you a little bit about DEXA scans, uh, what they are for, why we order them, and then a little bit about the procedure for it. Um, so let's start with the DEXA scan. Uh, DEXA scan actually has a really long term, which most people have no reason to really uh, memorize or learn, but it's actually a dual energy x-ray absorptionometry. So what that means is really we're testing your bone health. Um, and so a lot of people like to refer to it as a bone mass density scan. It's a lot easier to say. So we like to use that. But the reason your provider may order one is because we're often concerned about your bone strength or the health of your bones. Um, so bone strength is determined by bone mass density uh, and other qualities of bones that we're not gonna really get into at this time. So it's a combination of events. And when we do this DEXA scan or your bone mass density scan, whichever way you wanna term it, we are looking at that. So we're taking that information that radiology will bring to us and, and implementing that into a plan for each person. Um, so what we're looking for is three different things. When you get a bone mass density scan, our goal is to find out whether you have normal bone mass, osteopenia, or osteoporosis. So I do have a little sample here to kind of show you what that means. And so when we're talking normal bones, we're looking at a lot of matrix and consolidation here, and it's very dense. And this is what we want our bones to look like. That's normal. Um, if we're osteopenic then, we're looking at some weakening and loss of that mass. So if you notice, you, it kind of gets airier. The biggest problem is when you get osteoporosis, which is what we're trying to prevent always, is that it becomes very thin and see-through. Uh, and so those bones are really weak and easily fractured. The thing we're trying to prevent a lot of times is fractures, but Many times we'll order bone mass density scans because you have fractured bones and we want to see where things are at and see if we need to start implementing some sort of a treatment plan. So medical providers test your bone density to see if you have osteoporosis or often uh, to treat for osteoporosis. So once you have been diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis, we may want to see if our treatment plan is actually working well for you. Um, Cassie, who's our videographer today, is going to take you back to radiology to show you how that all works. Hi, I'm Audra Hergit. 
I have worked at their county health services for 30 years. I currently am in the role of director. I am going to demonstrate a DEXA scan today. We won't do a real patient, but I'll at least walk you through what to expect and what it will happen while you're in um, the DEXA room. To start off with, you'll check in. Once you fill out your paperwork, we'll bring you back to the radiology department. We will have to stop and get a heightened weight on you so it's up to date and current because the machine does use that to help calibrate the dosage that it would be producing for the x-rays. Um, once we get you in here, we lay you down on this table. There is a small amount of pad on the table. As you can see, there's kind of this white line and a box. What we do is we try to put the center of your body with the center of the white line. Once you're laying here, your head will be down this way. Your feet will be down towards this triangle box. We have the triangle box here so that we can position your feet. We want to roll them in so that it helps roll the hips in so we get the accurate positioning that we would need because we will scan the spine, well, the lower spine and your hips. And if you, if you had not had surgery, if you've had surgery, um, we either have to do one hip and a spine, or if you had, don't have uh, out of those three, two of them will do a forearm. So those are the four different ones that we can do here. Uh, once we get you laying down into position, we strap your feet in to help hold them. Then I come to the computer, we type in your information, we get it activated, and it will make a noise and it will do that here real shortly. This is the scanning arm that will come across you. I am able to bring it down, position it over your lower spine or hips, whichever one we would be doing at that time. It can, as you can tell, there's a little crosshair under here. So I can then center it with your body. And then once we get it all centered, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do your spine and both hips. Once we're done, we will put it back to its home spot and then we will be done. And at that point, we will send the images to the radiologist. The radiologist will make their interpretation. After they get the interpretation done, they then send the report to your provider that ordered it. And then at that point, they should be reaching out to you with your results. And that is a DEXA. When you get back your report on your bone mass density scan that was read by the radiologist, we as medical providers are going to look at that information individually. It will give us what we call a T-score, which is what we go by, to determine which kind of bone structure you have, whether you are osteoporotic, osteopenic, or normal. Based on those results, your provider will individualize a plan for you to determine what would be the best option for you. So if you have normal bone mass density, we're probably just going to encourage you to continue your normal calcium in your diet and make sure that you get enough every day. If you're osteoporotic, we're going to make other changes. And if you have, or excuse me, if you're osteopenic, we're going to make other changes. But if you're osteoporotic, most likely we're going to recommend some sort of a medication to treat for that. Um, and I won't go into great detail on medications for osteoporosis because really I think that needs to be individualized to the person. And then based on what that shows, uh, then determines how often we're going to want to recheck a bone mass density or a DEXA scan. So I do want you to know though that Medicare, because a lot of people are in Medicare, Medicare does cover um, a bone mass density scan on an, a welcome to Medicare visit if you had not had one done prior. So most people in Medicare should have had at least one done at some point in time in their life um, to make sure we're doing the right thing. If you fracture a bone uh, and you're menopausal, since this is Women's Health Night, then a lot of times that bone mass density scan will be recommended. And then you and your provider will determine how you want to proceed. Um, I hope that kind of gives you a little information and that you're able to utilize that uh, and 